I recently started playing Final Fantasy XIV to see what the hype was about, and although I still don't really enjoy the MMO style gameplay, I do really dig the world building in this game. Lots of cool locales and cities, there's even a place where you can register to be in a culinarian's guild, I mean of course I'm gonna join that for sure. Problem is, my combat class was too low, so while I work on leveling that up, might as well practice in real life. The next expansion, Endwalker, is coming out in a few weeks and there's no better way to get ready than to craft some Heidel and Grub from the Ultimate Final Fantasy XIV Online cookbook. In the Ultimate Final Fantasy XIV Online Cookbook by Victoria Rosenthal, you'll be following the guidance of Johan and Magria, two traveling culinarians that will walk you through Heidelin's different regions and its food. There's a section at the start of the book that outlines the different locations, highlighting what each region's cuisine is like. They also provide commentary at the start of every recipe page, talking about the people they've met and the places they've visited. Honestly, I didn't care much for the text since a lot of it is just talking about Johan and Magria's adventures rather than going into detail about the food. It does add a bit of personality and quirkiness to the book, but I'd rather know more about the world than these two characters. Each recipe page comes with info about difficulty, prep and cook time, yield, and dietary notes with helpful tips about specific steps and possible ingredient replacements, and all the recipes are accompanied by gorgeous food photos. It might just be me, but the images look extra glossy and I feel that the colors really pop and they're really nice to look at. And each recipe page also has the in-game icon of the food, which is always cool because then you can compare the cookbook version and the game's version side by side. Definitely one of the prettiest cookbooks I have so far. But looks are one thing, taste is another. Do these recipes taste as good as they look? I'm gonna make an FF14 inspired meal to find out. Starting off with a forest mikabob. First, with the seasonings, grind together one tablespoon of dried lavender, two rosemary sprigs without the stem, and one tablespoon of black peppercorns. Grind those up until you have a fine powder. Mortar and pestle might work here too. Then in a bowl, you're gonna combine those spices together with half a cup of oil, two teaspoons of salt, and three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. After that, the recipe calls for 24 whole white mushrooms, but since my shrooms were huge, I'd cut them in halves. This is just some of the mushrooms, by the way. I got more in another bowl. Let those marinate for 30 minutes. Now it's time to assemble the skewers. We're gonna start off with one of the mushrooms, and then one shishito pepper, a mushroom again, a quarter of a tomato, and then another mushroom. Because my skewers were ginormous and I wanted to fill up the space, I just kept adding more until I reached the end. Now it's time to grill them. Cook them for 8 to 12 minutes until the mushrooms are perfectly cooked and you got yourself some forest mikabob. Next, we're gonna do the starlight dodo. For this, you're gonna need a six pound duck. Pour six cups of boiling water all over it so you tighten the skin. Cover generously with salt. Tie the legs and put it in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. When you're ready to cook, pat the duck to get it as dry as possible and season the whole duck with some pepper. Now it's time to stuff the duck. For the stuffing, we need five crushed garlic cloves, one shallot, one lemon, one orange, and a sprig of rosemary. Once stuffed, bake it in the oven, breast side up, 350 degrees for one hour. Then take it out, flip, and bake for another 25 minutes. Let's make the glaze. You need half a cup of honey, a tablespoon of orange juice, and a tablespoon of molasses. Mix all of it well. When 25 minutes have passed, take the duck out of the oven, brush it with the glaze, and then pop it back in for another 25 minutes. When the duck is ready, remove it from the oven, turn it over again, and brush it with the glaze. Pop it back in the oven for 20 minutes. And for the final time, brush it with more glaze and bake it until the duck reaches 160 degrees on a meat thermometer. For me, that was another 15 minutes. Remove from the oven and wrap it in foil, let it rest for 15 minutes, and your starlight dodo is all set. Now let's craft some potions, starting with the X potion. Heat up a saucepan in medium-high heat and stir together half a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of honey, with one cup of water. When the sugar and honey are dissolved, add in three tablespoons of dried lavender. Once it starts simmering, reduce the heat to medium-low and simmer for 25 minutes, then remove it from the heat and let it cool down. Now let's mix up the lavender citrus juice. Start with a half cup of lemon juice, half a cup of lime juice, add all the lavender syrup that you made with one cup of water and mix it up. You can add a drop of purple dye if you want, that's optional. You can stop here if you don't feel like boozing it up, but if you do, add an ounce of gin, two ounces of Moscato, and four ounces of that lavender citrus juice you made, and that's the X potion. 
The other potion we're gonna make is a lot simpler. For the high elixir, we're gonna muddle half a rosemary sprig, then fill the shaker with ice, add in an ounce of curacao, an ounce of gin, an ounce of triple sec, two ounces of lime juice, and half an ounce of maple syrup. Shake and pour. Now we're ready to eat our Final Fantasy XIV meal. Starting off with the forest Mikabob, I love the flavor of lavender, but I've only had it in sweets, never savory, so I'm curious to see how this is gonna taste like. And honestly, it's kinda tripping my brain up a bit. I'm not used to that floral taste with the roasted vegetables, so I'm finding it a bit hard to get into. I do appreciate though how different it tastes. It feels like I'm eating something from a fantasy setting and not of this world, which is kinda cool. The coolest part though is that when I'm done with the whole stick, the skewers I have kind of look like swords and I get to practice my ninjutsu combos. If this impressive display of swordsmanship doesn't impress you, I don't know what will. Moving on to the big guy, the Starlight Dodo, straight from the fields of Lenosha and just in time for the upcoming Starlight Celebration. Cutting into the skin, I realized it wasn't as crispy as I expected, but on that first bite, my goodness, it's so tender and so flavorful. The honey orange molasses glaze gave it layers of flavor with a sweetness, tartness, and smokiness of it. And when I've cooked duck breast in the past, I almost always overcook it, but this time, super tender and juicy. The legs were also delicious, but the breast, that's where it's at. I wish I had some thin crepes, cucumbers, and hoisin sauce to go along with it. This would also go really well on salads, mashed potatoes, roasted veggies, or just on its own. Thank you, Dodo, for a wonderful meal. After a long day of cooking, I gotta recover some HP and MP, so let's try out some potions. Starting off with the X Potion. As I've mentioned before, I do like the lavender as a flavor and I like how it's used in this drink. It goes well with the lemon and lime and the Moscato is a nice added touch. I could go without the gin though. Now for the high elixir. I really like how this looks and the curacao gave it a really nice color, but man I do not like the flavor. For me it was just way too strong. I admit I don't drink much so I'm not the best judge for these, but I want to make them anyway because they look cool. Now I know that potions are just booze and citrus, good to know. So all in all, I had a lot of fun making these recipes. Yes, the kebabs and the drinks weren't my favorite, but I can't fault the cookbook for that. I knew going in that I might not like those flavors, so that's on me. But that duck was really good though. I still think there's a lot of interesting recipes in this cookbook that I want to revisit, especially in the breakfast and appetizer sections. If you want a super pretty cookbook that's a good balance of European and East Asian inspired dishes, then I think you're gonna like this cookbook. Final verdict? Pretty duckin' good. I want to give a shout out to my buddy AJ who was the first one to suggest this cookbook to me. He streams on Twitch playing a variety of games including Final Fantasy, so drop by over there and say hi. Anyways, thanks for watching, happy gaming, happy eating.